Hey guys, I'm John, and welcome back inside the Vintage Geeks toy room. Put the uh, bug alien over here with his cloak thingy. And that Thune that I got in that lot was better. Actually, Thune and um, Ming the Merciless were both better than the ones I previously owned. So they both went in the cabinet here on display and took the place of the ones I had previously. And there's Daggett, the two different versions, like I was trying to say. I had this really light tan peach colored Daggett, and now I've got the dark brown one too. So that's pretty cool. That lot really got me a lot of really good figures. Very, very happy about that lot. Really cool. Awesome, awesome stuff. Today, let's look at Azriel. DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys, Azriel. 22 moving parts, McFarlane Toys, ages 12 and up. Look at this character. Holy cow. Is this awesome or what? Whoa. Wow. We all knew Todd McFarlane would gravitate towards Azriel, though, didn't we? Azriel from Batman Curse of the White Knight. The other side just says Azrael. Batman Curse of the White Knight. Each figure comes with a collectible trading card, and that picture will be on the trading card. Other figures you can get in the series. This source material comes from Batman Curse of the White Knight, number one, from the comic books of 2019. So very, very recent. And there's that barcode for you guys who like that sort of thing. awesome i gotta say these packaging is top notch the dc multiverse packaging i mean this is a, a, just he looks so good in the box a lot of these do the bubble the window you know as opposed to like black series or marvel legends any of those kind of things the window on this just shows off so much of the figure that it makes it look really nice in the packaging and you almost not, don't want to open any of these. You want to display them just like that. It's like getting an acrylic case to display your figures in with the packaging, you know? Because <laughs> that's really all it is. I mean, you see the entire figure almost from feet to head, head to toe, without any blockage, you know what I mean? Like other things would put him all the way at the bottom so you'd, half the figure would be covered up by the logo. But not McFarlane. He makes you see the entire figure, you know, so you know exactly what you're getting. And if you want to display him in the box without taking him out, he looks just as good as if you had taken him out, you know? We're taking him out! We gotta get this guy out and look at him. Look at that flaming sword. Oh, this is awesome. This figure is almost unbelievable. Wow. I, I've got to get the lighting a little bit better on here. There we go. Wow, look at this guy. Holy cow. He's got a movable head, so let's see how far... Because this is going to be weird with the armor and everything on it. The hood, I don't think, comes off. But look, it goes down pretty good. But turning it's a little bit difficult. I mean, this is such a separate piece that it almost feels like it could come off, but I'm not going to try that. These, this cape, these wings, wow, this is cool. It's like straps of leather or something. This is really cool. Look at the detail work in the paint on this thing. There's like three different colors of paint in here. There's a dark red, which I think he's sculpted in, and then a black wash to fill in the lines, and then a light red over the highlights. Really cool. And this whole piece is done that way. And that looks like a separate piece that's put on over his armor. Wow, look at this. This skirt thing, separate. The dagger. Look at these gauntlets. Man, holy cow. This like medieval flare around the edges. Wow, this is a really impressive figure. Double jointed knees, of course. 
And we got the foot rock up and down with the toe joint there. Making it really cool. Does he have double jointed elbows? How's this elbow? Oh, interesting elbow joint. Look at that. It's got the little grooves in it, making it look like a an elbow pad when you bend it all the way down. That's pretty interesting. That's a novel way to, to sort of disguise a joint, you know? And he's got the awesome hand joints that McFarlane puts in there. Cool. He's got the standard McFarlane like triple jointed shoulder where there's a little bit of butterfly, there's a swivel and the up and down and everything all in this like triple joint that's in there. It's really cool. And same with the legs. They got this unique kind of joint system in the legs that allow for a little bit of rock back and forth. You know, to turn the legs out a little bit. And then you got the forward and back movement and the in and out. It's really cool. Yeah. Wow. This is a really good figure. Let's put him in some uh, cool poses here and get him up on the turntable. Look at this gold wing stuff in here, man. Wow. Holy cow. Really impressed by this figure, especially getting him out of the box and looking at him in a, you know, sort of more of a 3D sort of environment. That is just super impressive going into this, this whole, I mean, he looks great from that angle, doesn't he? Wow. Holy cow. And then he's got this really awesome sword. I mean, the hilt is two different colors. We got gold and brown with a silver blade. So he even takes care to make the accessories really detailed. This flame is not a bendy plastic like you get on in uh, Hasbro. It's a solid piece of plastic, which could mean that it's easily broken. But the flame, look at that thing, man. That looks freaking awesome. Wow. I mean, it glitters in the light. There's like highlights of orange and red mixed in with the yellow. This just, it really looks like it's on fire. I mean, this is some impressive work here. Turning this sword around. Just looking at the, the way the light hits it and glares off it. I mean, that is impressive work there. All right, I got him up on the turntable standing up. First, we'll look at him without his sword. Just kind of out of the box as you get him, you know, in a sense. Look at this guy. It is, he's so impressive. Just absolutely incredible. I mean, I've been blown away. He's definitely taking a prominent spot up on the shelf of DC characters. I have liked Azrael ever since back in the, uh, Night was it Night Quest? Was it when Batman broke his back? Azrael took over for a little while, and um, it was Night something. I think it was Night Quest, or or maybe it was after Night Quest. I don't know, but he was one of the ones that was uh, slated to take over. I think in the end, didn't Nightwing Dick Grayson end up taking over for Batman while his back back was broke? In the comic books, I'm talking about, you know. Boy, that was like 90s, right? Early 90s, probably. A long time ago. Here he is with the sword before it flames out. This is one of those figures, I'm telling you right now, this is one of those figures that everybody's going to want. So if you see him, grab him. Because, I mean, out of this series, it's like the Hellbat, you know? Everyone wants that Hellbat. And... Everyone's going to want this Azrael, especially in the future going down the line. Man, if there's one you want to save for the future, it's this one. <laughs> I think this is going to be like a super hit. This one is really nice. 
When you have him in hand, believe me, he's a fantastic figure. Really cool. Wow. And he's ready to go. I bring light to the darkness in Gotham. Your soul will be mine. <laughs> Gotham sinners will pay the ultimate price. As I vanquish the unclean from this earth. <laughs> really cool. Oh, wow. I mean, there's like Templar markings, all kinds of cool stuff on this character. Look at that, all that stuff. It's totally like Knights Templar you know, religious zealot. He's, oh, this is great. He's awesome all the way around. Wow. <sighs> An angel of death. And if you're like me, you like to see if they can get two hands on the sword. He can. I found one position here where you can get two hands on the sword. And uh, it works okay. It's not perfectly straight up and down. It makes the sword stick out a little bit from his body at an angle. But, I mean, it works for what you might want. You know, look at that. At least he can do it. There's not a lot of figures that can get two hands on a sword in almost any pose. So that's good that he can do that. I kneel before the gods in my unholy righteousness. I pray that the evil doers of Gotham will meet their match. When I rise, give me the strength to vanquish evil from the land. He can really be posed in some pretty cool positions here. I hope you agree. The light has been bestowed upon me. Where's my turntable gone? Where's the switch gone? <laughs> it's way over here now. Okay. As his sword flames, bursts into flames. Unholy light fills him with power. He gazes up at his sword. Gotham's criminals, beware! <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm making all this crap up. I'm just like going along with it because it's fun. He looks, he's such a cool character, you know? I just want to... Look at that. As the fire turns on. This rippling, like, wing-like cloak thing. Straps. <laughs> it's really cool. This is a cool character, man. I just think he is a really cool character. One thing I didn't mention, I didn't really notice till now, but his head can move separately. See that inside the cloaked face? Then the whole, the whole part. Do you get what I'm saying? The face itself can move inside the cloaked hood. 
separate from the rest of the figure. Pretty cool. Well, there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have liked this one. Azrael from DC Multiverse. Part of the Batman universe. Azrael is a really cool character. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Really appreciate it. Stick around if you want to see a little skit. You know, Spock is about to get himself into a little bit of trouble here. Stay, stick around to find out what I'm talking about. There was this one day and Spock was like, I think I'm going to go for a walk. And Spock was like going for a walk and stuff. And he's like, I think I'm going to keep walking. And he ran across, oh my gosh, it's He-Man with compies. And he's like, I'm going to throw compies at you because I'm strong and I can do that. And, and Spock's like, no, please. This is totally illogical. Don't throw compies at me. But, like, E-Man's not a good guy, so he did it anyways. And he's like, ha, 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 look at all the compies all over you. And he's, like, dangling one, going, like, this is going to go in your face, man. And then, and then like, the girls showed up today, and they were like, oh, no, he's throwing compies everywhere. And they all ran away. They are like, ah, help us, you know. And they, they ran over there, and he's all, like, taunting them. He, 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 I'm going to get you. There's nothing that can stop you or me, anyone. <laughs> copy, copy, copy. This is most illogical. But alas, on the horizon, it's the Sharktacons. Ha-ha! Oh my gosh! No! <laughs> the, and the shark decons make short work of He-Man. Come jump jump! Nom 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 nom! <laughs> and then like when it's all done Spock gets up and the compies go away and he takes the ladies and he's like come on ladies let's go out for dinner and he like comforts them and makes sure they're not scared anymore and he's like I'll take care of you